Cheese Farm, the dumbest farm in all of YouTube, and about a year ago, I bought this farm right here behind me, established in 1895. You can see a beautiful, picturesque farmhouse, but I didn't really care about that as much. I wanted the property. It came with five acres, and I wanted to transform this into the ultimate car guy's paradise. So I set about building a dream car garage, and uh, well, it's been a year, and none of it's done yet, and it's massively over budget, and has been a huge, huge nightmare. The other day, I was actually putting a generator in my 46 Chrysler Town & Country. I swapped it out in my old barn, which seemed really appropriate for this car, with the uh, ambient lighting and my phone, and it took all about 20 minutes, and it just felt like absolute paradise, until I realized I should have been in my car building months and months ago, having air conditioning, having all the tools, lifts, and everything, and it's not even close to done yet. So it has been a complete mess, just like anybody who's tried to do a home renovation or a home build in the last couple of years. I guess I thought I was special or cleverer -er than the other people and not have that happen to me. And uh, well, I've been scanned on some things and uh, yeah, it's it's been a nightmare. So today I'm gonna take you through everything that I've spent so far in the last year on Hoovy's farm and it exceeds the purchase price of the property, which was $850,000. Uh, yeah, brace yourselves. Uh, we'll actually start with the outside, so I'll take you on a tour in the 46, now that it's charging. So big changes to the exterior start with the addition of this circle drive right here that didn't exist before. There's an entrance, a second one, about right there inside, and I thought for extra privacy, that should be closed off, and you can see the massive berms that have been built up and that was achieved by digging out the pond. So now the road noise from that busy road there has been cut down a lot. We have a lot more privacy and we have a cleaned up pond, which is right over here. Oh, it rained earlier this morning, so hopefully we're not mudding. Yeah. All right, I'll consult my spreadsheet of doom here that has all of the costs. So. Uh, the pond, I spent $16,600 initially to dig all this out enough to add to the back berm to give me that privacy. And then we discovered that uh, it was a total swamp. Sludge had filled it in over decades and the deepest part in the middle was, well, about here, not even to my waist. So it needed a lot more. That was another $22,000. And uh, not only did we do that, we did the rocks around here. You can see the stone at the edge there to make sort of a beach. And then all these trees surrounding it as well, because eventually, these cornfields behind me are going to be developed into a neighborhood, so we want to get started on that privacy right away. So further back at the entrance, I did a security gate. That was $10,000 for that. Also did the same pretty stone around it, and in that bill, I can't really differentiate it, it was also leveling out the pad for my new building, which I'll show you in a little bit. That total was $24,203 to prep the land to build the building. Then. There's the trees, uh, I'm a little crazy on the trees. $26,000 in trees. Yeah, yeah I know, uh, but there's a lot of trees out here. And also $21,000 spent on sort of a landscaping refresh. You can see all the flower beds look beautiful. April did a lot of the hard manual labor, but as far as the rocks, I just wanted to make this look less like an abandoned farm and more like a, a nice estate or a property. And it all added up. The grand total for all the exterior items, $120,046.48. I didn't know landscaping cost as much, and we still have more to go. Obviously, there needs to be grass here, there needs to be grass in the backyard, there needs to be sprinklers, irrigation, so I'm looking at, I think the quote is another uh, thirty or forty thousand dollars to go, and then I'm done. Oh yeah, the fountain too. That cost a couple of grand, and it actually showed up not working. Since the pond was such a mess, I wasn't able to put it in right away. It sat in a heated and air-conditioned barn for, I don't know, eight, nine months. We put it in, and it didn't fire up. Uh, the people that sold it to me said, well, you can mail it to us and then we can fix it, uh, but you've had it for too long, so sorry. So I actually had a guy replace the pump on it and it is now working. I had to climb up the windmill to hang all of the ambient sort of lighting surrounding the property. It does look really cool, but uh, uh, a little risky on my life for something like that, but the end result is pretty cool. So let's continue over to the car barn, which you all want to see the progress of and total up the cost of that. <laughs> The 
Today is actually a pretty momentous day at Hoovy's Garage 3.0. So let's uh, take a step inside. Let there be light. So this is actually the very first day that I have had electric power to this building. And it has been a process. It all started basically right after I bought this property. I put a deposit down basically in July or August. And then the building didn't get delivered until November, a long wait. But the really long wait was waiting for the erection to happen. And unfortunately, the beams, the steel beams sat out for way too long and they got all rusty and nasty looking. Uh, but then in March, they finally erected the building. And then came the long wait for the contractors to come out and do the electrical. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though, so let's start with the cost here. The concrete, $58,500 for a 60 by 100 pad that's six inches deep, so 6,000 square feet. Uh, the delivered building total was $104,822, which is per dollar per square foot, very, very cheap, which is why I wanted an agricultural property to where I didn't have to worry about zoning rules if I was in a city and getting approval for all of that. And same with the neighborhood, it'd be even harder to build something like this, probably wouldn't even get approved. So that's the big benefit of living out in the country to where you can build something like this, a very affordable building, but also very well built. You can see very thick steel beams. So uh, the erection was $35,000. I did have to pay a $1,296 permit. Then we have $30,000 for the HVAC, which is mostly installed at this point. They needed power to continue the installation, which I didn't have for a very long time, unfortunately. Yeah, $30,540 for the HVAC, $29,173 for the electricity. But Butler County didn't want to give me electricity until I upgraded my transformer on the property. That was $5,220 to do that. And then so far, you can see this is going to be my vintage gas station car dealership area over here. Uh, so far, $8,711 spent on this. Nowhere near done. The lifts have been started to be installed from Ben Pack. They look fantastic. You can see the end result will be very, very cool when it's done, uh, but we are not close to it yet. Uh, the electricians have been the big holdup for this part of the project. Not as bad on the commercial side, but then on the residential side, it's the same company. They have really, really let me down. One part was trenching the power from the transformer to the building, and I just gave up on waiting for them and found somebody to just do it themselves as part of their bid, but I had somebody else come in and do it because I had been waiting for weeks, and they were saying they were delayed and backed up for weeks there. So I got that roadblock out of the way, but then still they were very slow to wire the power, or I guess fish it all the way over to there to where they could put on the meter and activate it and you know they keep getting pulled away to different jobs rather than coming and finishing this out this could have been done months ago but it hasn't so on the commercial side it's been a little frustrating but you can see progress somewhat reasonable on the residential side and this is the same company it's a completely different department though with residential it has been an absolute nightmare and same when it comes to the house and the cost of that if i just had this building and the landscaping done and done that this year and then the house later on i would have been in much better shape but the house is where the massive bleed has been and there have been a few huge gotchas so let me show you the old farmhouse before we go inside i actually wanted to mention this as well another benefit of living in an agricultural area i can do these cheap little lean-to carport buildings i'll have a garage door on this eventually and this was only $9,000, a few thousand more for the concrete, but I made a big mistake. I made it tall enough to fit my big Explorer conversion van, the high top, but then I didn't measure the length of the conversion van, and uh, yeah, it's a 20 foot garage and the van's 20 and a half feet, so if I put it in here, then I couldn't put the door down. So unfortunately, adding another five feet to it, which was another thousand in concrete, and then another thousand in building materials and labor to put up this extra section. So not the end of the world as far as a mistake. The big mistakes have been inside of the house. Now, my original thought was I was going to spend, oh, I don't know, $300,000, I think was the original budget for the house to spruce up the property, and then $300,000 on the building. And as you can see with the building, I'm more or less staying in budget because we're at 270 something thousand dollars on the building currently and there's still a bit more to go but on the house well it's been rough so come on in so before this was the entryway 
There's the old living room in here, which looks very, very nice. In the 1950s, that was actually the entryway, and this was the dining room. Uh, but the previous owners took the enclosed porch and actually added on, added a little bit of square footage to it, and uh, the ceiling height was very low, much like this portion of the building. So now, originally it was listed for sale for $1,350,000, and it is a great property on paper, as far as the location, as far as the dollar per square footage with that. But being an 1800s farmhouse, it didn't really have a main bedroom that we would consider acceptable today by most people, even in starter homes, you know, very small bedrooms with tacked on bathrooms because it was built in the 1800s as far as all that upstairs. And it didn't have that open floor plan that people like, that big open space. So I thought I'd solve those two issues by making this, which is the new great room. You can see uh, it is really big and nice, but we did that by only adding about two walls right here, or at least in principle, that was the idea. And then the existing garage, the two car garage became the master bedroom. So yeah, two walls, a higher ceiling, using the existing structure over there. Sounds doable for $300,000, at least I thought. Um, no, <laughs> no. So I'm not gonna go into the minutia of every single you know frame and board and all that stuff. I just wanted to talk about the things that uh, got a little out of control when it came to this house build. And the first one is the tile. You can see this beautiful marble fireplace right here. That's actually our third choice in options. One I got back ordered into Eternity. One was fake and it was very cheap for the tile. They were massive, like 15 foot tall tile uh, for, I think it was about $4,000 to cover the whole fireplace, like four pieces. But then the quote to install it was $20,000. So I didn't do that. For that, you could get something real, which is what we did this marble right here. And that cost $6,254, the tile right there. The tile in the bathroom, $8,500. And that's just for the materials. We then had an installer that was here for a month. They were two older guys and they worked really, really slow. They were here for a month and they did basically three shower walls. And that was it in a month. I'm sure there's a little bit more prep and other things and all this, but still painfully slow. So finally we were able to let them go and bring in another crew, but then that meant things got more expensive because we had to do a different crew and they had to finish the other guy's job. We had to pay those guys for what they did so far. Uh, so $8,500 went to the first guys who were here for a month, which sounds really cheap as two guys, but they didn't do very much work. Uh, then the second set of guys for the fireplace to finish out the bathroom, because so they had to still do the floors, most of the work in the bathroom, $17,000, which was a little bit expensive, but not out of this world. So that was a big cost add-on. The other one was the floor. Originally, the house had this gray sort of linoleum in it that was really, really cheap. And there are synthetic vinyl floors that look good, but this one, it didn't. It was gray. Nothing. It looked pixelated. Nothing looked right with it. I just hated it from the moment I saw it. It was the one thing that I really hated about this house when I bought it. Uh, and well, I wanted something that looked appropriate to the house and uh, we had to do a special kind of floor because this is concrete. It's a slab down here. So just the materials for this floor uh, going into the bedroom, going out here through the whole house. Uh, that was $24,069. Yeah, and $11,000 to install it. And so the grand total of that, $35,000. So that was the big overage. Uh, another big overage was the windows because you look out and see this beautiful fountain and pond and everything else. Wanted to add all these windows and the sliding door, which you can come down here and see. A tall sliding door, which adds money to things. Uh, so that was $16,088.17 for windows. And we reused some windows in this house uh, to save some money, but still windows very expensive. Obviously a lot of money, but the result is something that you can really see and appreciate because you look at the windows and uh, see the outside. It is beautiful. So not too bad on those two. The brutal one has been the lighting and the roof. So we'll start with the lighting. You can see, you look up here, the sconces, they're not done yet. So the last uh, six, eight weeks, we have had Fawn Stock come to the house on a Friday, like I said, three Fridays or so in the last six or eight weeks. They work for three hours or so, nine o'clock to noon, and then they leave for lunch. They come back at one, here maybe an hour before they're called away for some emergency they have to help somebody finish a job. They'll be back Monday, and then they don't come back. They don't come back for a week, two weeks, three weeks sometimes, and we're left with this unfinished stuff right here. And you can see this pile, this is the pile of unfinished uninstalled lights in the house and we're just still waiting on them to show up to hang lights. 
very frustrating. There is one big chandelier up there that uh, hasn't showed up yet, but the grand total for all the lighting, $8,300. So a lot for lighting, but the end result, whenever it gets installed, will look good. I just want Fonstock to show up and put in a full day's work, a few full days of work, so it's not piled up in boxes here. But there is one good news with the lighting. Come in here and see. So this is one happy accident right here. The chandelier we got for $600. It's listed on their website for $6,000, and they had it on sale at the wrong price. I think it was supposed to be 10% off, not 90% off. And we bought some other lights from them. We hit this button thinking they would never send it to us. And they actually did for 600 bucks. So an amazing deal on that. And it definitely brings this room together and makes it not look like it was a hobby shop. This was actually the two car garage and the little apartment sort of sewing room or a little, I don't know, whatever. But it had the low ceilings and with the shape of the roof, it was kind of strange to be able to bump it out. That's why it's low here because you couldn't do it with the joist. But we did this little bump out here and that made a big difference to make this not feel like it was a two-car garage. So yeah, lighting has been an issue, but uh, good news there, we're gonna get through it obviously, but the roofing was the big major gotcha on this house. And I asked them when they got started, I said, did you leave a bid for this because I didn't see it, so my contractor will send it over to me or tell me if I ask. And he said, no, we don't bid out usually these kind of jobs, we just uh, you know, do whatever cost is plus a certain percentage. And you know, we're not out to screw anybody over, but when they say that, and they say they don't do bids, which all roofing companies do all day long is give bids. I knew that I was in trouble. I got assured by my contractor though, uh, that he's worked with them for a while and I shouldn't worry about it. And we out, when the bill came, and this was for the siding as well. Now keep in mind, they were able to reuse a lot of the roof. So uh, this part is new, but where I came out the window is existing. That top is sort of new, although they didn't put on the plywood and all that stuff. Um, this part obviously over the new great room that's much taller is new, but they were able to reuse a lot of the metal because this was the garage. So basically two sides of metal and then this new top and a little bit of this, maybe, I don't know, less than 2000 square foot of this flat vinyl roofing. And then I guess six sides of metal and then the siding, which once again, they were able to reuse a lot of the siding. It's just cheap vinyl siding. They charged me $70,000. $70,000, which makes no sense. I was really, really mad, and the contractor had me meet with the roofing people to discuss it, and they showed me some things and their numbers, how they came to it, and I asked them, I said, so you're telling me if hail comes or a storm comes and totals out my roof, that it's going to cost $200,000, $250,000 to replace by this math based on what you did? And he looked at me with a straight face and he said, yes. No, it doesn't. So. I know it's just my opinion. I don't know much about roofs and the metal roofs. He said it was a commercial grade roof or whatever, but no. For that kind of money, I probably could have done a really nice looking slate roof, not uh, you know an agricultural sort of metal roof or whatever. But uh, obviously these are built to last as long as something big storm-wise doesn't pop up. It should last for a very long time, but the flat part of the roof, as far as the original architecture, is a bit of a concern because water will pool in different places and all that kind of stuff. So time will tell, but that brings the grand total to this property as far as the house-related and landscaping-related items, $641,000 spent on the house and the property itself. $277,507.44 spent on the building, which I'm keeping that separate because obviously I can write that off because it's a commercial space, my new film studio and all that stuff. It'll be really cool when it's done, if that if that ever gets done. Uh, so yeah, the grand total, $918,000 spent. That's right, $918,000. That's what I've written in checks in the last year to renovate this property. I took no construction loan out. I've just been selling off cars and hustling any way I can to make it. And honestly, I didn't make it. I've had to hawk some cars on a loan like my Countach. I have like six figures in credit card debt right now. Uh, yeah, I put 20% down on the house as well, so that's a consideration. But now my grand total into the property, $1,768,851.62. And uh, I'll be saved when I'm able to get a new mortgage based on the new value of the property. Uh, but the appraisal came back at a value of only 1.5 million. That's what they think the house will sell for in its current state, which is obviously $280,000 less than what I've spent on it. So it's much like what happens to my cars, except on a house in a macro scale, bought a hoopty farmhouse and uh, 
found a lot of things wrong with it way more than I thought, then thought I could improve it, which I did, but uh, now I'm in it way more than it's worth. So, uh, yeah, same as cars, except much, much more stressful, much more annoying, so many more moving parts with people and, and things and back orders and all that stuff uh, that I'm ready for all this to be done and to just get back to losing my butt on cars over and over and over again because it is so much more fun and delightful and interesting to me than this house stuff that has been a complete and total nightmare to be honest with you. So I don't want to end the video on a negative note. Obviously, I am very fortunate to have what I have in this beautiful property that many people would kill to own. And I have it because you all watch these videos. Nothing else other than YouTube views has paid for all of this. So I am so incredibly lucky that I have that in the first place. And to make things more fun for me, I'm going to end this video actually uh, going and checking on some hoopties. So actually, I head down to Van Gogh, my detailer, to drop off my Mercedes G50 that just got fixed at the car ninjas and pick up my $3,500 740IL, which is all finished. Now, I bought it for only $3,500. Really, really cheap, you think. But uh, it all starts adding up as you go through and fix things that have been sitting for years and getting it all cleaned up. So we'll have a grand total on that car as well. It'll be much lower than this, though. Way lower, but still. It adds up. Whoa! Back in business. It was always fast before, but uh, maybe that little bit of oil getting into the cylinders helped things. I don't know. That, well, it's just as fast now. And every time I get back behind the wheel of one of these, I just see the appeal, the simplicity of it, the stance of it, where you're sitting. It feels like an old truck, an old off-roader with this almost vertical windshield, this teeny tiny dash, and then that flat hood, but it's still a very comfortable, nice place to be. So. It is the best of both worlds, a hardcore off-roader that's also reasonably nice to drive on a daily basis. So I do get why these things have held their value so well. I just got unlucky with one that had cylinder scoring. That is fixed now. And this is my favorite spec, the supercharged V8, but I do need to sell some cars and this one is, well, an easy one to sell now that it's fixed. Just needs to get cleaned up over at Van Gogh and they have another car that is ready for me, my 740 IL, which I bought really cheap, but uh, just like any cheap car, it all adds up pretty quick. Such a cool car, but it needs to go. One last thing though, clean it up. So Stuart at Van Gogh to the rescue yeah. again. This one, it doesn't really need anything, no damage or anything serious. So just a good quick, I guess, dealer detail is what we would call yeah. it, right? So. Is, it, is it tan? No, no I went oh. down a dirt road, oh, so yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's black, it'll yeah. clean up. But uh, oh, no, this one yeah, great. yeah, definitely uh, wash me yeah. with this one. I can't, I can't spell anymore. Oh wow, that's uh, watch me. Yeah, wow, that's super embarrassing. Anyway, there's a car for me to pick up, right? Before I just have a complete is. stroke on camera. Is that German maybe? Wash. You're not gonna let that go, are you? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Thirty-five hundred dollars, seven forty IL. Now does I mean, holy moly! So it was it was nice before, but it's just garage kept, you know, really well taken yeah. care of. I'm sure the guy never took it to detailers though. It was probably, just, yeah. probably yeah. hadn't had a good buff in 20 years, but uh, yeah. Or it was in, it was in great shape, so it makes it so much more fun. Right. Yeah. Well, it's easier to see with the Bentley in a black paint, but yeah, you got the depth out in the paint yeah. with this, yeah. the wheels. Yeah. Look great. Yeah, oh, the rocker was damaged right on the other side. Yeah, right, yeah, actually, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we painted both. Um, yeah. Okay, that is yeah. much better. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's all fixed and all polished out. Got the engine. Yeah, let's take a look. Inside was really nice. The steering wheel cover. Oh, thank you. you. I ran out, I ordered some, and I thought they came in, but they didn't. <laughs> All right. Just for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the inside, the inside was nice, but yes, much better. The engine bay is definitely one I wanted to see because once again, 20 plus years of dust, never been detailed. So I was curious how it was going to come out and oh, yeah, a bit ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. I know. It's funny how you can just get them so clean. Takes a little work. But yeah. Yeah. Well, how bad is the damage? Not that bad, really. All right, what office accessory am I paying for uh, this time? 
<laughs> I need, let me think. No, I'm just kidding. Um, not too bad. Uh, no. Yeah. One thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars. Yeah. So to do the rockers was six fifty. Otherwise, the standard detail. Yep. Yeah. All right. Pretty good, I think. I'll take it. I have basically a mint seven forty IL, but uh, yeah. there's still the uh, bill from the car ninja that mm -hmm. I haven't gotten yet for everything. The transmission had to come out to fix a leak and some other stuff. So I guess they'll have the grand total of what I'm into this thing because they started yeah. thirty five hundred dollars, but then it yeah. sort of. You know, you always say, oh, I only bought it for 3500 bucks, and then it keeps right, going up. Right. So, exactly. we'll see. <sighs> this car is so satisfying for the money to have this beautifully preserved time capsule for what I have into it. It's pretty awesome. $3,500 for the car, $1,200 at Van Gogh, and then $1,800 at the Car Ninjas. So, I did almost double my investment in cleaning it up and fixing it up. $6,500 into it now, but so, so worth it. These non-sport package 7 series, which I hadn't owned anything non-sport in 5, 7 or whatever in a very long time, they're just so smooth, but also so engaging to drive. It is just literal perfection. And the way BMW is today with a 5,500 pound M5 that's a hybrid and it's amazing how far they have fallen, how much they've changed from their original DNA. And I am very happy to continue to preserve and enjoy this one, if I can hang on to it. There's other cars I'm gonna sell, the G55, the Land Rover Vogue Convertible, the Buick Park Avenue Ultra, to be able to uh, pay off uh, the credit cards and get through the house. But really, once I get the new mortgage, things will be fine. And recently, if I've seemed a little frantic or you know a little uh, crazy more than usual in my videos, well, it's because of all this, and it really has stressed me out a lot. So I am very much sorry for that if you've been picking that up, the sort of the vibe in my videos versus the normal goofy self. But I really am over the hump. And actually, today is my 38th birthday. I'm filming it this morning. Hopefully, I get the video out this afternoon, July 18th. And when I look back in the last year, yes, I am way, way, way worse off than I was last year with all of my uh, personal setbacks and other things. But obviously, it could be so much worse. I am so grateful for what I have, the people that I have in my life, and this amazing place that is getting close to finish, even though it doesn't feel like it, uh, to enjoy it and share my car enthusiasm with you. And getting grumpy at roofers and electricians, it's really small potatoes in the grand scheme of things, and they're just working hard, doing the best they can, putting food on the table. I'm not sure if they're screwing me over or not. It, it, whatever. It's all working out. It's all fine. And as always, Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to give me a big birthday present, well, about 30, 40% of you aren't subscribed yet. So you could hit that button below to subscribe, like the video, or leave a comment wishing me a happy birthday because that helps YouTube when you engage there in the comment section. Again, thank you so much for watching.